the dinosaurs ruled the earth for about 200 million years or more. And the dinosaurs went extinct 63 million years ago from today. Now that would be right about here on our time scale. If here's written history, then the dinosaurs went extinct here. Did you see the marker move? Because that's not a very big distance in there. That's when the dinosaurs went extinct. This is the history of life on Earth. Okay, the dinosaurs went extinct here. We are here. Wow, okay. And let's step our scale up a little bit. The dinosaurs went extinct 63 million years ago. Humans last branched off one of the important branches for humans from monkeys evolutionarily was 20 million years ago, approximately. And there are other important branchings. But the one we're going to look at is 20 million years ago. Humans branched off from an ancestor that, of monkeys and humans. And we're going to call this our 20 million year section. So remembering the dinosaurs died 60 million years ago, that would be three lengths of this whiteboard. So this is our scale now. Now, we're talking about where we branched off from the monkey genetically, basically. An ancestor of the monkey branched into us and what turned into the monkeys. And for all this time, something's going on, and, then, and eventually we get to a point where we're genetically modern humans. That's about 100,000 years ago. Some people are going to say 40,000, some say 120,000, but we're going to say 100,000 years ago. Now if this represents 20 million years, then 100,000 years is going to be right about here. Okay, so this is where we branch off from the monkeys, and this is where we become genetically modern humans. And all this in between is maturing into modern humans. Now that's 100,000 years, and this is 20 million. And right about here is where we see the first stone tools in history, 7 million years ago. And it's the Swiss army knife of the Oldovian period. So that's about seven and a half million years ago that they first start working stone tools. And stone tools remain unchanged. This is basically, it gets a little more refined, they get smaller, they get more widespread, they're across a larger area of the landscape over the millions of years. But until about three million years ago, until about right here, this section in here was stone tools, these types of stone tools. Now, Remember, we have evidence of stone tools seven and a half million years ago. So, what does that mean for eight million years ago and nine and ten million years ago? They were probably using wooden tools, right? So the use of tools probably goes back 10, 11, 12, 15 million years, who knows how long. But stone tools, not until seven million years ago. That goes on for millions of years. So now let's wipe all this off the board. And let's put this as a hundred thousand years so that there's 50,000 years. Now this is a genetically modern human. What happens in our 100,000 year period? Well clear down here we get writing. That's the first writing. And the first cities in agriculture begin about two or three or four thousand years before writing begins. So we have a period over here maybe where there's cities and stuff, and then writing starts over here. Okay, so here's cities. So we're going to call this period the rise of civilization. This is genetically modern humans. What were they doing all this time? Well, now that's the story of anthropology. And we're not going into that. It's a very interesting story. Um, if you ask me, it turns out they were sitting in little collectivist tribes, building up the concepts that eventually allowed society to occur. But they were genetically modern for a long time and here we have the rise of civilization. Now that's the story that we're going to be looking at in this introduction to civilization. So as our last time scale stretch, let's put this as 2,000 years ago right here. So this is when Christ was born. 
that's the year zero. So there's today, 1,000, 10,000, 12,000 BC. Now this right here, this area is the rise of agriculture. From seven to 9,000 BC, agriculture begins to, to take shape, to really occur. Uh, and it takes shape in a couple of different areas, and it disappears actually in a couple of areas. We're not going to spend too much time on the details of how agricultural production took hold, but there's a couple of things we'll note about it. There's different levels of agriculture, we might say. There's um, a form of agriculture called horticulture. Horticulture. Horticulture is like taking care of the plants that are there. Finding plants like banana trees or whatever and tending to them, watering them or taking the weeds out from around them or whatever, making sure that they're good and fine. And that is a step that must have come before agriculture. Like people finding good stands of wheat grass and you know wheat that we have today is like retarded huge bulbous seeds and the wheat that s people started with is really small grains, really pathetic compared to what we eat today. We've got these fantastic evolved forms of wheat and um, grain and fruit and so forth, but horticulture was the first step towards that. Horticulture is where they took wild plants or animals uh, and sort of used them towards their benefit without taking the next step to agriculture. And then agriculture is the step where you start planting the seeds where you want, when you want, instead of just finding it in nature. Horticulture. So agriculture begins around 8000 BC from uh, roots of horticulture, and there were a couple of places in the world where agriculture was started and then it was dropped. So we have evidence, for example, in upper areas of Iraq where agriculture happened for centuries and then disappeared and was gone for literally centuries and centuries before it came back to the area again. So on this scale of where here we have farming starts about 8000 BC. Now here's 2000 BC and we're going to put the pyramids right there at 2450 BC. Now the pyramids, you probably know, were actually built over a fairly long period of time. 800 or a thousand years is how long the pyramid craze lasted in Egypt. And maybe longer than that. And the early pyramids were kind of funny looking. The early pyramids were like this. And they stepped inwards the really ambitious later ones that were just perfect monoliths was a development that came after centuries of developed culture in the area. So how is it that we sat for thousands and thousands of years building stone monuments and growing grain and then in a hundred years we went from having the plane, the train and the automobile to being on the moon and nuclear energy and everything else. How did we get what we have today? I, I hope you're seeing the scale of a vast amounts of history and what we've achieved in the last century or two in the United States of America. The first big question, what made America possible? The second big question, what makes any type of progress possible in any country in history? Those are the two primary questions uh, that I think you learn from dealing uh, and learning history, but also the myriad different little morals and things, just little tidbits about history and inspirations from different individuals and stories that you would never dream of occur in history. So that's our motivational first installment in uh, Ancient History of Civilization. So on the first real video in it, once our introduction now is out of the way, is going to be on the development of writing and the alphabet in Mesopotamia cuneiform.